Parkinson's disease is usually thought of as a brain disorder, the slow death of neurons that control movement, but decades before tremors appear, other signs emerge. Constipation, restless sleep, subtle changes that point away from the brain and toward the gut. Something small is missing there, something that vanishes quietly long before neurons begin to fail, and that absence may hold one of the most overlooked clues yet in the mystery of Parkinson's. I am William Wallace, and you are listening to Daily Value. Parkinson's disease is remembered for its outward signs, tremors, slowed movement, and muscle rigidity, but those visible symptoms are only the final act of a much longer story. Years before the brain falters, subtle changes appear. Digestion slows, sleep fragments, and mood erodes. And beneath those early warning signs, researchers have discovered an even stranger thread. In the gut, entire pathways for producing two critical compounds seems to vanish. The disease has always been defined by abnormal protein clumps, alpha synuclein fibrils, forming in dopamine neurons of the substantia nigra, yet these same fibrils appear far beyond the brain, in the brainstem, in the autonomic nervous system, even in the mucosa of the intestines. Two decades ago in 2003, the BRAC hypothesis suggested they might start in the gut itself, climbing along the vagus nerve toward the brain. The idea seemed radical at the time, but the evidence kept mounting constipation, depression, and disordered sleep, often beginning years, even up to two decades before motor decline. Interestingly, patients who had their vagus nerve surgically cut a complete vagotomy showed nearly half the risk of developing Parkinson's as if the disease's root had been severed entirely. Still, this raised a deeper question. What makes the gut vulnerable in the first place? Why does the protective mucus barrier thin, exposing nerves to the very toxins of modern life, pesticides, herbicides, industrial chemicals, that might drive the aggregation of alpha synuclein. The gut microbiome has long been suspected, but until recently, the evidence was a bit murky. Studies showed differences in bacterial communities, but not the precise clue investigators were searching for. Recently, a new line of evidence has emerged. Across patients with Parkinson's, researchers consistently find a loss of microbial pathways that synthesize two vitamins essential for maintaining gut defenses. And when those vitamins decline, the consequences ripple outward fewer protective metabolites, a compromised barrier, and a nervous system that is increasingly exposed. Which brings us back to the mystery. Could the silent disappearance of these vitamins, made not by human cells but by our resident microbes, be the trigger that sets Parkinson's in motion? When the first reports on Parkinson's and the microbiome appeared, they were fragmented. Small studies, different methods, inconsistent results. Some showed certain species missing, others found entirely different shifts. No single signature seemed to define the disease. To cut through this noise, researchers in Japan turned to shotgun metagenomic sequencing. Rather than just cataloging which bacteria were present, shotgun sequencing reads the genetic instructions themselves. That's the metabolic blueprints of what those microbes are capable of producing. They didn't stop with their own data set. Instead, they combined it with five other cohorts from the US, Germany, China, and Taiwan building a global meta-analysis across six different countries. The first result seemed counterintuitive. Alpha diversity was consistently higher in Parkinson's. Alpha diversity is a measure of how many different species live in the gut and how evenly balanced they are. Usually, higher alpha diversity is considered a good thing. In this case, patients harbored more species with abundances more evenly distributed. At first glance, that might sound like resilience, but the effect was a bit deceptive Within that broader mix of microbes, important functions had gone missing. Look closer and a pattern emerged. The mucin degrading genus Acromantia was consistently expanded while short chain fatty acid producing bacteria like Roseburia or Fecalibacterium were diminished. This shift hinted at erosion of the gut barrier. Less butyrate to feed colonocytes, more mucin consumption, stripping away the protective lining. It suggested that even with more microbial variety, the ecosystem was moving in the wrong direction. The real breakthrough came when the team analyzed not the taxonomy, but the actual metabolic pathways. Using gene set enrichment analysis, they tested thousands of enzymatic functions to see which were consistently reduced in Parkinson's patients. Out of all possible pathways, two stood out above the rest. Vitamin B2 riboflavin metabolism and vitamin B7 biotin metabolism. Across data sets, across countries, these pathways were repeatedly and significantly depleted. Even after adjusting for confounders like age, BMI, constipation, 
and medications, the signal remained quite strong. In other words, Parkinson's patients carried microbial communities with fewer genes to make riboflavin, vitamin B2, and biotin, vitamin B7. On its own, that finding would already be remarkable. Human cells cannot synthesize these vitamins. We rely on diet and our microbial partners to supply them. But the researchers took the analysis a little bit further. They measured metabolites directly in fecal samples, and the correlations were clear. The reduction in riboflavin and biotin biosynthesis genes track closely with reductions in short-chain fatty acids and polyamines. Both of these classes of molecules are absolutely indispensable for intestinal health. Short-chain fatty acids feed colonocytes and induce regulatory immune cells. Polyamines maintain epithelial integrity and anti-inflammatory balance. Together, they help preserve the mucus layer that insulates the enteric nervous system from toxic insults. Remove that protection and the stage is set. Increased intestinal permeability, exposure of enteric neurons to pesticides, herbicides, and xenobiotics and the abnormal aggregation of alpha-synuclein fibrils within the gut wall. From there, the pathology can climb toward the brain. For decades, scientists have suspected a gut origin for Parkinson's. What this study added was a strikingly specific clue, not just a generic shift in bacterial species, but the silencing of entire vitamin pathways. And the loss of those pathways appeared to cascade directly into the biochemical vulnerabilities long observed in Parkinson's. Loss of barrier integrity, chronic inflammation, and the initiation of protein misfolding. The disappearance of these microbial vitamin pathways wasn't just a statistical curiosity. It connected directly to the biochemical machinery that keeps the gut protected. First, riboflavin or vitamin B2 plays a structural role in energy metabolism. It forms part of the electron transfer flavoprotein complex of an enzyme called butyryl-CoA dehydrogenase. This is what's called a flavoprotein, meaning that it's reliant on the use of riboflavin to operate. This enzyme is required to generate butyrate, one of the most important short-chain fatty acids for colon health. Without adequate riboflavin, butyrate production falters. Second, riboflavin indirectly governs polyamine synthesis. Inside cells, riboflavin is converted to flavin mononucleotide, or FMN, which acts as a cofactor for pyridoxine 5-phosphate oxidase. The enzyme that activates B6 Active vitamin B6, in turn, is essential for the enzyme ornithine decarboxylase, which catalyzes the first step in the polyamine pathway, producing putrazine, spermidine, that one most of us have heard of, and spermine. These polyamines reinforce the mucus layer, regulating immune signaling and suppress inflammation. In this way, a lack of riboflavin can cascade into a deficiency of both vitamin B6 activity and polyamine production, as it's said that vitamin B2 is the limiting nutrient to actually maintain vitamin B6 status, of course, besides vitamin B6 itself. Third, biotin or vitamin B7 also appears to intersect with these protective systems, but the exact targets remain unknown. The enzymes most vulnerable to biotin deficiency have not yet been mapped in Parkinson's. Taken together, the logic is pretty clear. When the microbial supply of riboflavin and biotin collapses, butyrate levels fall, polyamines decline, and the gut's protective barrier thins. What begins as a small biochemical silence ripples outward into structural weakness, exposing the enteric nervous system to the toxins that spark alpha-synuclein aggregation. It would be easy to assume these vitamin losses are simply collateral damage, a downstream effect of a body already in decline, but the evidence pushes back. In animal experience, riboflavin deprivation for three weeks sharply reduced short-chain fatty acids, repletion restored them almost immediately. In humans, just 50 to 100 milligrams of riboflavin daily for two weeks increased fecal short-chain fatty acid biosynthesis. The vitamins weren't just markers, they were actual levers. Even clinical observations hint at more than coincidence. In a small study, Parkinson's patients given high doses of riboflavin, around 30 milligrams twice daily, showed some recovery of motor function. Another pilot study gave people 100 milligrams of riboflavin and found increased abundance of Fecalibacterium prosnitzi, a prominent butyrate-producing species. In Crohn's disease supplementation with, again, 100 milligrams of riboflavin per day, decreased systemic oxidative stress, reduced inflammatory markers, and lowered disease activity. These are precisely the processes, oxidative damage, mitochondrial stress, chronic inflammation that also drive Parkinson's pathology. Biotin tells a parallel story, though not yet studied directly in Parkinson's trials in progressive multiple sclerosis, have tested a high-dose biotin at 100 to 300 milligrams per day, and that showed functional improvements in vision, 
and some in motor capacity. Known for its anti-inflammatory actions, biotin, in theory, reinforces the same fragile pathway in Parkinson's. The implication is pretty profound. The disappearance of riboflavin and biotin may not simply reflect the microbial aftermath of Parkinson's. Their absence could be weakening the very defenses that hold the disease at bay, accelerating barrier failure, inflammation, and neuronal vulnerability. And the return, even through targeted supplementation, may restore part of what the microbiome has lost. The loss of riboflavin and biotin pathways leaves the gut barrier compromised, short-chain fatty acids and polyamines decline, the mucus layer thins, and enteric neurons are exposed to toxins. In this setting, alpha-synuclein fibrils form and inflammation drives pathology forward. What makes this finding striking is that these deficiencies may not be passive. Evidence suggests restoring the missing vitamins can revive microbial metabolism, reinforce the barrier, and reduce stressors linked to Parkinson's progression. It is not a cure, but it reframes the disease, not only as a neurological disorder, but as one that may be shaped by the silent disappearance and possible restoration of two simple vitamins. Thank you for joining me today on Daily Value. Until next time, stay healthy, everyone.